So 2021 has been a real roller coaster of a year. Lots of memes, meme stocks, Wall Street bets, cryptos, DeFi, all sorts of stuff happening. To understand how this really started, we have to look back at last year, 2020, where lots of the world was kind of forced to stay at home and we were all looking for something to do. I can't believe we've got to stay inside from tomorrow. What are we going to do? What about investing? Well, like stocks and shares and things. Yeah, why not? Stocks and shares, we could do it. No, man, we, I, my name's Pete. I have to change my name. Do you mean you don't, have to, you don't have to change your name? Why would you have to change your name? You don't get stockbrokers called Pete. You have to pick a fancy name from like a fancy school or something. Are you joking? That's the reason you don't want to try it because you have to change your name. That and the stuff in the hair. What do you mean stuff in the hair? The, the grease in the hair. And we'll have to wear those things. Braces? You, you mean like braces? Like from, from the 1980s? Yes. They, they all wear braces and you have to treat people badly. There's no way I'm doing it. I don't want to change myself that much. If I can guarantee you, you're not going to have to change anything, would you give it a go? You sure? I'm sure. Are you absolutely sure? Yes. Listen, Pete, hold on a second. I'm changing my name to Giles, okay? Oi, oi you, watch that spot. Don't miss that spot. You know how much those shoes cost? I've been Rupert for almost four days now. Rupert, okay, Rupert. Listen, you like the boat, right? Like the gifts we sent? Good, now you get me that approval. Listen, it looks like it's falling. We might all need to take a haircut. No, the company's not insolvent. Listen, of course it's not insolvent. What do you mean there's people outside in suits and badges? So all of a sudden, we're all traders, right? We're all stockbrokers. Unbelievable, like really exciting. Normally, we're not allowed into this world. It's a hidden world, saved for the elite, for the future. You. Not us, you know, but now we're all in and unlikely leaders started to emerge. Dave Portnoy. Dave Portnoy. Dave Portnoy. Dave Portnoy. Dave Portnoy. So Dave Portnoy was the founder of Barstool Sports, which is a pop culture and sports publication. So it's not someone who knows anything about trading or investing. But there he goes. He's involved. He's changed his name to Davey Day Trader and he's out there winning. After today's rally, Davey Day Trader's portfolio is now up. <laughs> More than $1 million. The New York Times calling him, quote, the captain of the day traders. The FT coining him a retail bro. And Bloomberg saying Barcelona Sports Dave Portnoy is leading an army of day traders. So it just got stranger and stranger. Not only was he winning and everyone was reporting on it, mainstream media would stop their normal broadcast to check in with Davey Day Trader. Dave, great to have you back with us. Fast Money friend, Davey Day Trader, aka Dave Portnoy, the founder of Barstool Sports. Dave, always great to speak with you. So it's an incredible time. Everyone's sort of involved. Somehow everyone seems to be winning. And there's a leader who's not part of the financial elite, a sort of an everyman trader and investor. So we had the army, we had a leader, what we were now looking for was a cause. And it came from a subreddit known as Wall Street Bets. Looking at the Wall Street Bets forum on Reddit. When you say Reddit, a lot of people think Wall Street Bets. Wall Street Bets, the red hot Reddit, that's R-E-D-T-I-T. -T. There's no need to spell it out. The Reddit effect is real. And it's shaking up traditional financial markets and lowering barriers of entry for individual investors. It's nothing short of remarkable. And I really do think this is really the start of a new era for how we're gonna perceive the, the public markets. So Wall Street Bets is a community on Reddit where people just discuss their trade ideas the markets in general, and just talk to each other about trading. There's a lot of new people, but there are also some very shrewd investors. Now, one of these more shrewd investors was a user named Roaring Kitty. He was one of the leading sort of protagonists in the unfolding situation and the leading voice in the subreddit. Now, he'd actually go on to have to testify before the US government. That's how big this situation got. They wanted to know what had just happened. Now, it started when Roaring Kitty and other members of Wall Street Bets correctly identified an opportunity with a company called GameStop. Short interest in GameStop. At this GameStop situation is the craziest I think I've ever seen. We have some breaking news uh, right now on what has turned into uh, the soap opera and uh, saga of the markets right now, and that is the story of GameStop. So GameStop was a struggling gaming chain in the US, and the huge investors, the institutional money, were betting heavily against it. So heavily that they'd left themselves exposed. Reddit users saw an opportunity to inflict serious pain on all those short sellers betting on GameStop going out of business. Normally we think that you invest, you buy an asset here, it goes up in value and you sell it when it's higher. Buy low, sell high, make some money. But there's another way to actually make money. It's called short selling. And it's basically making money off the price of an asset as it falls. Now, some of these big Wall Street institutional investors and funds, they were doing this to GameStop. They could see that GameStop was in trouble as a company and they had placed all these short sell trades open, betting that com the company GameStop would go down and down and down and down. The risk is if the price goes up. 
If you're a short seller, you're going to be making money as the price goes down and down and down. But if the price of the asset starts to go up, you're losing money. The people at Wall Street Bets saw an opportunity. If they could just buy and hold the stock, they would start to force the price upwards and upwards. As they did, the short sellers would be losing money. Now, this relied on Wall Street Bets having the ability to communicate throughout their community and make sure everyone just bought the stock and held it. The plan? Start a retail investor buying spree. Buy, hold, and watch the GameStop price skyrocket. So we had the makings of an amazing narrative here, really. A lot of people were just in it to be part of it. It was a, as much a cultural phenomenon as anything else. So over on this side, we have all these new traders using all these sort of just normal uh, retail investor trading apps. We have Dave Portnoy out there in the front lines as a sort of leader. On the other side, we have uh, this institutional money, or seen as arrogant, seen as elite, seen as aloof, betting against this company GameStop. And this huge clash appeared. This army of normals if you will, has a larger purpose. Target the hedge funds, punish the pros who made billions of dollars profiting off a financial system so complex that a regular person can't compete. In short, take down the man. So the fight was on. Could this ragtag collection of noob investors, the dumb money, calling themselves apes, really take on Wall Street and win? GameStop is set to continue their head-spinning ascent today. Shares are now up more than 60% pre-market amid an ongoing battle between bullish day traders and hedge fund short sellers that have bet against the stock. GameStop shares have now risen some 700% year to date. All of this nonsense, all of this noise, all of this whining by Wall Street, it's making me sick. I have a kid who bought a house. He had, he made $50,000 and bought a house. 140% of GameStop was short. I didn't hear one person on TV complaining about Wall Street trying to crush GameStop. 140% short. I told my subscribers, buy this stock and they made a fortune. GameStop shares have soared over 1600% so far this year. Just in the past week, the stock jumped 400%. There were many twists and turns along the way. There was one point where a popular trading app, Robinhood, actually shut down trading for the company. They wouldn't let traders trade it anymore. And there was an outcry from the entire community about this. We just saw this morning that clients of Robinhood reported they're unable to um, to access certain stocks like GameStop and AMC. David, we do have now some statements from Robinhood and Interactive Brokers about restricting trading on some names. The retail brokerages, for their part, started responding to the frenzy on Wednesday, when TD Ameritrade and Charles Schwab imposed trading restrictions on GameStop, movie theater chain AMC, as well as other names. Free trading pioneer Robinhood followed suit on Thursday, only allowing customers to sell these specific stocks but prohibiting them from buying. This seemed like it was just the little guy was winning and the rules changed on the fly. So this just seemed like such a huge betrayal of all the retail investors. We relied on these apps. These were our apps. They'd let us take on the big boys on Wall Street for the first time ever, and we were actually winning. And at the point when we were most winning, it seemed these apps had turned their back on us all. They'd sided with the big boys against us, and this was just a lot for people to take. Somebody has to go to jail for this. This was intentional market manipulation. And it's everyday people. It's just not the Reddit people. I have people right. hit me up all the time. Today, yesterday, they're putting their rent into this. They got caught up in the momentum. And if you lose money fair and square, fine. But nobody was under the impression somebody could just press the stop button and say, guess what? We can crash this stock without you having any say. Now, Robin Hood CEO Vlad Tenev was all over financial news media, putting forward his side of the story, saying it was just due to regulation. It wasn't his problem. It was out of his hands. Talking to Chris Cuomo last night, the app CEO ruled out interference by market makers when they decided to restrict trading in these stocks. I know that there's rumors around that, um, you know, we were directed by market makers or other market participants to do this. And I want to be 100 percent clear. This decision was not made on the direction of any market maker or uh, other market participants. But the financial news media wasn't letting him off the hook that easily. What they did was against all their clients. Their clients were the ones who were making money and they basically cratered the stock on purpose. So I, I, I just don't believe anything that guy says. But These then why did you allow people to keep selling but not buying? The reason that is so troubling to people is that they were making money buying the stock because they were against the short side. And so by enabling them to sell but not buy, 
it sounds like you were allowing the hedge funds. And again, one of them owns a piece of you and they had a big short position. And that looks like a stinky conflict that you didn't come out straight on from the start. Even John Stewart weighing in who tweeted the Redditors aren't cheating. They're joining a party Wall Street insiders have been enjoying for years. So this story had really reached people who are not normally interested in financial news. They weren't interested in it for that. People liked the idea of David versus Goliath, of the retail investor, the underdog, taking on these mighty titans of the finance world. And they could see that this was a bit unjust. Are they going to get a fair deal? Or are these institutions going to be allowed to get away with just stopping them right in their tracks, right when they're winning, and seemingly fairly? Now, at this point, the politicians started to get involved and start investigations. What started with a group of young speculators banding together to buy shares in struggling companies like GameStop, taking on some of the most powerful hedge funds in the country, has triggered an investigation by the New York AG, a class action lawsuit, and calls by Congress for big changes. When Robin Hood prohibited its customers from purchasing additional shares of several stocks, other brokerage brokerages merely adjusted the margin requirements on these stocks. Uh, so, Mr. Tenev, given Robinhood's track record, isn't it possible that the issue is not clearing houses, but the fact that you simply didn't manage your own book? Um, from an outsider's perspective, you have the bullies, the hedge funds, and their armies of analysts and lawyers and regular old suits attacking the trust GameStop by shorting its stock. And then to the rescue, here comes the retail investors, and they're taking stock to these incredible levels, and all of a sudden, Robin Hood steps in. But not to help the little guy. He, he steps in and says, I'm going to help the big guy, and stops the sale, because no one knows how high this is going to go. And who's getting it? Who's getting socked in this thing? The bullies are, the hedge funds. Whenever you're short selling, I understand that GameStop stock was short sold 140%. Um, and Mr. Uh, Plotkin, you made the comment in your testimony a minute ago that you were not trying to manipulate stock. Yet, if you're if you're short selling a stock 140 um, percent, for me on the outside looking in, it looks like that's exactly what you're doing. Explain to me why that's not manipulating a stock. One thing that's emerged from the congressional hearings is that they're interested in how retail brokerages make money and whether they're keeping the best interests of their customers in mind. But it's pretty fuzzy as far as what they would actually do as a result. Now, trading in GameStop and the other companies was restarted by Robinhood and the other brokerages. And Melvin Capital, who primarily owned all these short positions which were losing money, they had to get out of the trade and they had lost a lot of money. Melvin Capital is now out of the stock. They got out of the stock, from what I understand, yesterday afternoon. Uh, I just got off the telephone with Gabriel Plotkin, who runs that firm. Uh, they have taken a, a rather huge loss. I do not have the full number on what that loss looked like. Uh, as was reported yesterday, both Citadel uh, and Point72 have infused something on the order of close to $3 billion into uh, Melvin Capital to try to shore up its finances. Now, for Wall Street bets, this seemed like a huge win. GameStop had gone through the roof. The people betting against them, the short sellers, had had to exit the trade, lost a ton of money, and apparently been bailed out. They'd lost that much money. More importantly than that, though, the world had seen that now there were these traders, the retail traders, were not to be messed with. They weren't just sort of this ragtag group of the dumb money anymore. They'd actually very publicly taken on Wall Street and managed to win. What we learned is that when people organize online, they have the ability to disrupt the market. And it was a big sign. The ivory walls of the institution aren't as powerful as maybe the institutions thought them to be. And the investment funds, the Wall Street people, had taken note that there's now an organized new player. And if we make stupid bets in future, and we take stupid risks, we might not just get away with it because there's a new set of people watching. Over the next 10, maybe 15 years, you're going to continue to see whether by choice or by force, that baton go from older generations to younger generations. I don't think any single app uh, is, is going to be the thing that disrupts. I think people are the disruptors. So as this whole story unfolded, it wasn't just us who were watching what was happening. 
we noticed that the billionaires kept weighing in on the side of the small investor. So Chamath Palihapitiya, one of the founders of Facebook, kept weighing in on the side of all the retail investors, the small traders, talking about the excesses of Wall Street. I think that what you're seeing is um, essentially a pushback against the establishment in a really important way. So this morning I woke up after spending all time, <clears throat> all last night in Wall Street bets, reading about all of this stuff, and I wanted to announce that I'm taking all the profits that I made, plus my original position. So I'm going to take $500,000 and I'm going to donate to the Bar Stool Fund for small businesses. We saw Elon Musk, wasn't the last time we'd see him in 2021, but he actually interviewed Vlad Nemev on Clubhouse. Vlad the stock impaler. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys. Spill the beans, man. What happened last week? Why do you... Uh... Stop people. Why can people buy the GameStop shares? The people demand an answer and they want to know the details and the truth. Now, this wasn't the last we were going to hear of these billionaires in 2021, not by a long shot. You practically couldn't go on Twitter or turn on the news without seeing that Elon was up to something new. All year, the man was prolific and also a marketing genius. See, all of the cryptos in 2021, they were also in a bull run. Bitcoin all-time highs, Ethereum all-time highs, all these altcoins coming out. But Elon was single-handedly moving the meme coins, Doge and other ones, constantly during the year. It was really, it was quite something to watch. On top of this, we had the emergence of a whole new set of assets. Suddenly, people were spending millions on little pictures of punks and little pictures of apes. And the great auction houses of the world were jumping onto this new craze of NFTs. It was exploding everywhere. So towards the end of the year, hadn't finished yet, Facebook decides to change its name to Meta and kicks off this enormous new land grab in online virtual worlds. Suddenly we're all picking up our satchels, heading west and looking for our gold in them there hills of the metaverse. We'll get to that in the next one. For now, thank you very much for watching. Please hit the like button, please subscribe for more, and I'll see you in the next one. Now, I think if I just posted that on Twitter, I'd be fine. <laughs>